a celebrate trust on Plus TV Africa, and right now we're going to look at the economic impact of fuel subsidy removal on wages. And we're glad to have uh, joining us right now, uh, Olua Shegun Elegbedi. Uh, he is the MD, Page Me Network and Communications. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Okay. Let me borrow the words of uh, 29th May. I'm not talking about the individual, but the reigning words are from 29th of May. Subsidy is gone. Okay. So we're looking at, um, like we saw one cartoon that I, I saw, um, <clears throat> there were three friends, or four friends rather, and every one of them was growing. Commodities were growing, transportation growing, and salaries remained the same. And that seems to be the issue right now. Fuel prices have gone up, transportation has gone up, uh, food prices have gone up, and everything else has gone up, but the salaries are the same. Now fuel subsidy has been removed. Walk us through how you feel this will impact on the, the, the working class, the people who are employed uh, by other people, not the businessmen that can add the credits or the, the, um, the, the, the increments to whatever the people who are going to buy from them will have to pay. So tell us how you, what you envisage will be the situation with salary earners, for instance. Well, it, it is an interesting time for everyone um, living in Nigeria as, as of now. I also would say that it's still uh, going to have effect on people who are in diaspora because if you have to spend money back home, it has to be with some uh, uh, arrangements now. Uh, the news, of course, we have been hearing that the subsidy regime was going to end by the end of June. Uh, the last administration said so much about it. Uh, I, I think uh, what we have not done as, as a people was to prepare for this. And there's no way you can prepare for this because the government has to be the one at the forefront in, in making these changes and preparing us for this period. Uh, it, is good, it is really turning on a whole lot of people. This came at a period where people are just getting their salaries. What it means is that if you have a car and you are living on a 30,000 naira minimum wage, once you, I mean, you can buy a full time for your car, you may not have anything again. If not, you may not. You can't have any other thing because you feel like an average car now is around 23,000. Some car goes to as much as 25,000. So, if you are earning 30,000 naira, what you have left is not enough to, to take care of your other needs for the month. And that will to also have effects on your purchasing power. It also affects how you begin to look out after your family, a school fees, or those who are already are family men and women. So, it's, it's an interesting time. The youth effect is so enormous. And what the government did not do, even though the removal is welcome by almost everyone, is that they did not prepare us for this period, and that's why we are here. Okay. Uh, every sector of the economy is trying to proffer some solutions uh, to this uh, problem of fuel subsidy removal. Some have advocated that uh, salaries be raised to 200,000 Naira, um, and someone expressed concern that 30,000 Naira, there are some states that are not even able to pay, uh, let alone 200,000 Naira that they're advocating. What do you think will be the solution that will work for especially the people who earn wages so that they can survive? There's no doubt. Salary increment has to come in place. Uh, but from the side of the government, um, I understand with the demands of the TUC, I hope, uh, I think, the uh, NSC also have the same demand, is that uh, they want to ensure that whatever is being put on the table for a demand from the labor unions, it's something that the, the treasurer and the state governments can afford. Just like you have said, a lot of states have not even been able to implement the last adjustment in, in minimum wage, as we speak. And that is to tell you that states are broken. And if we also jack up and there's increment in, in salaries across the board again, what's going to happen? 
And even when the government can con conveniently do this, what is the fate of the, the, the private sector? They have the financial muscle to increase salaries across the board, like the federal government and state government who did. It's, like I said, it's an interesting thing, and so a whole lot of things need to come in place. If, as the government is taking towards salary increment, which is very, very natural at this period, they should also be looking at how to make the business environment for private sector more friendly so that they can edge their cost. If, for example, if power is, is um, regular and, 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 and most companies can do without alternative uh, power supply, they can get uh, uh, public power supply to do their businesses, it will reduce the overhead cost in a way. If the government is also looking at the tax of the day for some of these private companies, it will also have, I mean, mean that they will have some other areas to bring in some fund and increase salary for their workers so that um, they will be able to cope in this uh, trying time. Again, it's also the fact that uh, the, 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 the private sectors and even the federal government should be looking at how to reduce the number of uh, working days for, for their staff and to also maybe adopt hybrid, hybrid uh, form of uh, uh, working condition where you go to work maybe twice in a week and work from home and, and, and the like. So, so these are options that uh, both the private and public sectors can look at and and help uh, pushing this in effect and, uh, as, as, we, as we go forward in this uh, subject of the region. So let's take, for, ins for instance, a um, problem I have with uh, going to work uh, only a few days. Let's take, for instance, the police. Nigeria is under-policed. Uh, so much so that we have like at least 400 to 500 people to one policeman, which is not very good for us. And then policemen also go to the market. They, are, they also take transport to the market. They own cars, some of them and all that. So if you say, let's say three days out of a week, if you are supposed to go five days to, to work, uh, a policeman stays home two days or three days because of the fuel subsidy removal, how will that impact on the, the general populace in terms of protection and all that? It would mean that the policemen... It, 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 yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it, it would mean that not only will we... Yeah, I, 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 Don't worry, you, you, have, you have the idea. So answer me, what do you think that would mean to us? Uh, I don't know if Shagun can say here. Okay, I, good. When yeah. I mentioned the hybrid uh, method, I, I wasn't really uh, saying that it is applicable to Every. all strata of professions. There are, there are some, like for, for the medical, for the security, and some other critical and us. areas, yeah. of, uh, like, 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 like the journalists. So you, you cannot say uh, the hybrid work for everyone. But for those that can work, these are areas that I believe the critical uh, think tank group for the government we need to look at and ensure in which area, uh, uh, which profession can we uh, push into this hybrid from which profession and not, and what can we do for those that can and for those that cannot. We seem to have lost audio there from Shagun. I'm sure he will rejoin us as soon as possible. But we're talking about the impact of uh, fuel subsidy removal on uh, wages. We know what the wages in Nigeria are, but we know even what the minimum wage is and what the challenges have been like from all the states from across the states. Uh, some states are not even able to pay uh, uh, 30,000 as minimum wage. Now, TUC is asking for 200,000 Naira as minimum wage, which is, which is fair if you, if you consider what is being paid in some other countries as minimum wage. And if you say 200,000 should be paid, who should pay who? 
That's the question. Is it the federal government paying its staff? Or every staff or every worker in Nigeria will be paid that as minimum wage. The states will pay 200,000 as minimum wage. Federal government will pay uh, 200,000 as minimum wage. The private sector will pay 200,000 as minimum wage. Is that realizable? If the private sector, if the federal government and state governments can pay, can the federal government, if they pay this kind of money, will they still have money to run the organization that they are running? So if you have 50 staff and you're already struggling to pay them, sometimes the month ends and they won't be able to pay. And then now the government comes to you and says, you have to pay 200,000 as minimum wage, that is the law. Uh, can they pay? Or will they lay off all their staff or 90% of their staff and have only 10% to do the work of the other 90 that have been laid off? And if they lay off 90% or even 50% of their staff so that they can have enough money to pay minimum wage to the ones that will be remaining, what happens to the people that will be laid off? The, the problem is hydra-headed and we do not understand if the, the way the federal government has gone is the way it should go. Because for a lot of people, it shouldn't be a solution that will be targeted at some particular people. It should be a solution that everybody can enjoy. For instance, if the train um, service in Lagos State were working, you'd know that the policeman can take the train, the army man can take the train, the school teacher can take the train, and whoever else is working anywhere else, we the media people, the journalists, can take the train as well. So it is a solution for everybody. It's a universal kind of solution. But you say you're increasing uh, minimum wage. Before you even say the minimum wage is increased, the landlords already have the memo, and they have increased their own. The people who are selling in the market already have the memo. They have increased their own. And you find out that at the end of the day, the 200,000 may not even be enough. Well, we have a dicey situation here. We do not know. Uh, I do not know if uh, Shegun has rejoined us. Mr. Lua Shegu, are you there? I am here. Yeah. Okay. For the yeah, very good. Uh, we lost your audio at some point. That's why I was just talking on my own here. Um, but I, will, I was wondering, what other solutions can we have? Uh, apart from the fact that we need... Whether fuel was removed, subsidy was removed or not, uh, salaries should have been increased by now. The federal government actually said something about it, that they intend to uh, increase the salaries. We do not know if it was for federal workers only or it would have been for everybody else. But they said they were going to increase it, and so fittingly. But before they could even land with that statement, the landlords increased their own salaries, and some market women had heard it already and jacked up their prices. Now, this one has come again, this fuel subsidy removal and all that. Can't we find a solution that Nigeria will get to a point where you don't have to worry about anything. You can pay your taxes as you want, you can do your businesses as you, as you want, and then know that you have some kind of security education-wise and every other aspect of your life. What are other solutions apart from increasing the salary of workers that you might prefer today? Yeah, I, I think even before the issue of subsidy, one of the major issues that has resetted the economy is the fact that the uh, inflation rates are really in, on the high side. Um, and as of the last uh, statistic, uh, I think it was said that 63 percent of the Nigerian population are um, multidimensionally uh, poor, uh, which means that this new government have its work cut out for for, for it. It, it. I mean, the government has to approach all this myriad of issues with different approaches. Uh, there is no excuse good enough. The president himself had said that uh, he did not, he was not pushed for the uh, to, to run for this post. He applied for it and is ready. And we believe that putting the industry uh, eggheads in place, it will uh, mean that they will be able to fashion out different strategies, economic, social, economic strategies, and all of them, what they can think of to combat these uh, hydrated problems that we have in Nigeria. Power is a major issue. If businesses are able to uh, 
go about the activities without having to think about the financing means of energy. They can do the sense with low cost, low overhead cost. It will mean that there will be more people to be employed, which will reduce the unemployment rates. Um, again, the issue with a uh, uh, foreign exchange, which has uh, 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 parallel markets, if that is also combated and the effects is uh, we are able to uh, people are able to import and then get the effects at the official rates, which is more uh, uh, affordable. It, it means business environment to begin to ease up for more people to come in, foreign investors will come in, and once foreign investors start coming in, it means that there is more prosperity for the country, more employment rates, and then more money has to be budgeted for infrastructure in this country. The infrastructure the, the deficit is on the high side. So many of these things are, have to be in place for us to begin to see that we are moving a, away from these old drums to a better plan in here and it will be better for everyone and nobody will be able to complain again that the country is not, I mean, I want to leave the country and all of that. So that I think the government must understand its, its uh, assignment in this regard and begin to work. Like they said, they want to keep the ground running and then that will be expected in the coming days. Okay, we've been talking to the government. Please uh, also talk to the people, the salary earners, the wages earners, uh, people who might be affected by this. How do you think they can cope with the situation now until things are put in place to make life better? Uh, in a lot of ways, uh, it, also, it means that uh, if, if we begin to look at our activities as a people, individually, wherever I'm not needed, wherever it's not really important for me to go, I do not get, I mean, back on that journey. And if I need to, uh, uh, I need to look at it physically, then I also need to cut, on, cut down on my spendings. Uh, people need to begin to look at that. You don't need to, begin, this is not the period to spend lavishly. Uh, as a country where we like to, throw money at parties and do all sorts of uh, ceremonies. It's a period for everyone to really have a routine in the way we spend. And then if you know there are some things you cannot afford in terms of education for your children. And it's, it's not it's not a bad thing if you remove your uh, children from the school, which the school is too high uh, to a modest one where you can actually afford that the, the, the goal is for them to Get educated. So all of these, and of course, people should not use this period to exploit Nigerians. Nigerians. This is not the period to begin to um, make unnecessary profits. And of course, the the institutions were maximizing profits. For me, I said they were exploiting. It. So there is difference between maximizing profit and exploitation. So we shouldn't use this period to begin to exploit ourselves. And you know. Let us all do this things because whatever you do at your own corner will have equal effects, and then you, it's, it's, a, it's a cycle. So let us just have this belief that it is for a better tomorrow for all of us. If the government is sincere, if the government is sincere, I believe in the coming days and months, we should begin to see the true uh, dividends of this global subsidy. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Oluwa Shegun, for coming on the program and talking to us. It's a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Arch. We're talking to Elegwede uh, Oluwa Shegun, the MD Page Me Network and Communication there, on uh, the impact of the fuel subsidy removal on the wages. Uh, so we're going to take a short break, and when we return, we'll be looking at securing homes with technology. Stay with us. <laughs>